All right. Here we go again. I'm going to try it one more time. We'll see what happens. If we scroll down, what we see is the first thing you missed was question number two. And question number two asks you which the numbered sentence is, is not supported by details. You put eight. The correct answer was ten. Let's go back and look at eight. Okay. Some children may find photography interesting. Um, still others, you put still others like building stage props and working behind the scenes. Now, this is actually part of this sentence. In other words, there are two sentences working on theater. However, there's only one sentence that talks about photography. If you go back up here to music, what you find is they say a lot about music and how it will help them get an appreciation for lifelong music. It, it gives more details for every other support with the exception of 10 where they talk about photography. That's why 10 is the best answer. If we go down to where you missed the next question, you got that one right. This is where you missed it. Okay, so which numbered sentence is least relevant? Now relevant, what that means is, is it's not important to the passage. The whole passage is about kids and how they benefit from these programs. Yet if you look at if you look at sentence nine, local townspeople often enjoy acting in community theaters. That has nothing to do with children and how children benefit from these programs. Therefore it's not necessary. It's not relevant to the passage. If we keep going, we got that one right. We got that one right. We keep going. We got that one right. The next one you miss is down here where you talk about uh, transition words. Now furthermore means in addition and consequently means as a result. When we go back and read the sentence, what we have is spectators of sport often are criticized for being passive or lazy. Certainly, spec do not attend sport events for these lessons. Would you want to put the word in addition, it is refreshing, or would you want to put in the word as a result, it is refreshing? Well, since this is not the result of that, I wouldn't put in as a result. I would put in in addition. And the only transition word that means in addition is furthermore. So the correct answer is A. As you scroll down to the next one, you see that you start looking at vocabulary words. Now the first vocabulary word has to do with volcanoes and explosions. When a volcano explodes, it erupts. If it's coming out slowly, then you can say it's fizzling. But if it's exploding, then the best word is erupt. When it comes to the next word, you have accelerate and invigorate. Accelerate means to speed up. Invigorate means to fill with life or energy. Exercise in the morning speeds up an office worker, or exercise in the morning fills them with life and energy? The best answer is C. It's very difficult to study for questions 10 and 11 or those kind of vocabulary words because they're just tough. You did fine on the commonly confused words, but then you had trouble with modifiers. Now let's look at what your answer is. You said Ricardo put a single red rose hoping to impress his girlfriend. Well, who was hoping to impress his girlfriend? The rose? You have the modifier next to the rose. Who was hoping to impress his girlfriend? Ricardo was. And so the correct answer should have hoping to impress his girlfriend next to Ricardo. And if you look at answer C, hoping to impress his girlfriend, comma, Ricardo, and that's how modifiers work. Modifiers have to be next to the thing they're modifying. If we look at your answer here, you say she saw an accident on the highway driving to the grocery store. Who was driving to the grocery store? Was it the highway? Was it the accident, or was it she? And so the correct answer, notice, driving to the grocery store is next to the word she. That's how modifiers work. When you go down to the next one, you got that one right. When we go down, you got that one right. We keep going. You got that one right. Yep, you got a lot of these right. Good. Okay, so here we go. Um, this has to do with punctuation. If you look at this right here, by studying for two weeks before each major exam, who or what are we talking about? Is there a subject there? If there's no subject there and there's no verb there, there isn't a verb. Studying is not a verb, right? It's a gerund. Um, who is studying? We don't know, so there's no subject. So this is not a sentence. Well, you put the comma and almost like you're trying to join two sentences, but we don't have two sentences. What we have here is some introductory junk up in the front. And when you have introductory junk up in the front, you put a comma to set it off, or to cut it off. It's almost like if you started with the word however, that's junk. You put a comma behind it to set it off. 
You got that one correct. You got the next one correct. Next one's correct. Keep going. Keep going. All right, here you go. For as long as anyone can remember, those birds have returned to this spot. Well, have returned means they still return, and before now they returned. Return means it's a fact right now in the present. But I think what they're trying to say here is since everybody can remember it, that means it happens, it happens now and it happens before now. The best verb tense for that is called a perfect. This is what we call a present perfect. It means bef including now and before now. This is just everyday occurrence. Like, the birds return every day. That would be the better way to say that. And so the best answer is no change necessary because 24 is already right. You got that one correct? Okay, you missed this one. Neither of the masses elements show. This is what's called a subject verb agreement. Who or what are we talking about here? Well, we're not talking about massive elephants because that's part of a prepositional phrase. The subject of this sentence is neither, and neither is always singular. And so neither show or shows. The correct answer is shows. That's a subject verb agreement question. The next one is also, let's see here, some of the garage sale merchandise such as bikes, clothes, and video games have sold quickly. Well, we're not talking about bikes, clothes, and video games. We're talking about some. Some of what? Well, some of the merchandise. Merchandise is singular. Some is one of those trick words. If I said some of my homework, some of my homework is. But some of my homework assignments are. Some is a trick word. So what are you talking about? Well, some of the merchandise, which is singular, and so the some of the merchandise has is the correct answer. And so it has sold. Moving on to the next question. You got that one right. Going forward, you got that one right. You got that one right. Okay, here's one you miss. As Bill approached the stadium without a ticket, he wondered how he could convince them. Who's them? Who is he talking about there? You can't use a pronoun unless we know who the pronoun's talking about. That's why the best answer is the ticket takers. Okay? He wasn't wondering how he could... We don't know who he or him is, and so the best answer is to fill in the blank with who it is. The best answer is the ticket takers. If we keep scrolling down, you got that one right. You got the next one right. You got the next one right. The next one right. That one's correct. That one is correct. And so we come down here. Okay, here's one you got wrong. Okay. What kind of word is although? Well, although is a dependent word, which means you're going to need a comma. So, although we never saw anyone working, comma, that makes sense, the lawn maintenance service. Ah, you put lawn, comma, maintenance. Uh, you may have thought that it was saying, although we never saw anyone working on the lawn, but there's no on here. And so the real sentence is, is although we never saw anyone working, and then the next clause is, the lawn maintenance service was mowing and edging our yard regularly. And so this is the end of the dependent clause. This is the end of the junk. And so that's why you get a comma put behind it. There's no change necessary. When I scroll down and I see math, you said math should be capitalized. The only time you would capitalize math is if it's the name of a course. For example, Math 101. This, however, is his title, like doctor or professor. And when you put a title in front of somebody's name, you have to capitalize it. All right, that explains why you missed those questions. If you have any further questions, let me know. Hope this helps.